Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next episode of the Apex Show. I hope you're doing great and today I have a few very interesting topics prepared for you. Everything from different kind of personalities, type, I, type A, type B personality and how it kind of affects your success and even maybe give you a better understanding about the person who you essentially are and or who you might need to become in order to just start achieving different kind of results. And maybe even if it's possible to switch your personality and become a different person, I'm going to be definitely speaking about that. And yeah, then we are also going to transition to different kind of like vision for the future for humanity. I'm not sure why I essentially even had kind of uh, kind of a few thoughts about that today, uh, based on our uh, research and like even different kind of people I've been speaking about uh, two days ago or it was three days ago right now. Uh, was on a conference with with the chief technical officer of uh, CTO of Microsoft for Austria. And uh, he had a very interesting talk there about artificial intelligence and also got like a few interesting findings findings from there. So just today is the day where I want to share all of my findings kind of with you and so that you can go apply them and just really crush it, whatever, with whatever you're already essentially currently working on. Great. So without any further ado, let's just go and dive straight in. And let's start with type A and type, per, type B personality. It was, it was a thing that I've... I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure like the first time I've heard about it it was about like two months ago or maybe a month ago when when kind of like a classmate of mine told me like you're really a type A personality I'm like okay what's type A personality but then I didn't really even had had have time to research that and, and like two days ago I, I heard it once again like type A type B personality and now like today I just like had a, had a uh, I had some time and just w went through it and essentially like it splits up your personality based on the like kind of the person who you are and how you act and type A personality are people who are just driven by success like extremely competitive and patient and when I when I read the description I even have like the um, um, the description of a type A personality I can read it up for you uh, just so that you can maybe know the know what's behind that so type A personality individuals with type A personality are often described as competitive ambitious and time conscious they tend to be highly organized proactive and have a sense of urgency in their actions type R, type A individuals may also exhibit impatience and can be easily stressed I mean, um, and when I read that, I was like, okay, Jesus, like, this is a description of me. How, how do those people even know me? Um, it, it's just very interesting to kind of observe, observe this and maybe just for a comparison type B personality. Type B individuals, on the other hand, are more relaxed and laid back. They are less focused on competition, competition are more... Um, are, and are not as time urgent. Type B personalities are generally more tolerant to others and may have more easygoing approach to life. And when I read that, read that I was like, okay, Jesus, there is just, um, just so much here inside hidden that like, like even grow for me in terms of just what, what, can, I, what can I personally take from this? Because I'm the kind of like a person that I'm just like super driven by results. And the only, it's like you, I personally feel when I achieve whatever I achieve, it doesn't really matter to me that much. It, it's just like, okay, we have an achievement. Let's go and, and get something else. And and the journey is is kind of like the thing that really entices me the most and is, is the most exciting thing out, thing out of them all. It's just like really being on a journey, being on a mission, and, and like maybe even being on a mission, that's that's the right, right word how to or that's the right structure of the sentence, how to really describe what I'm feeling, like just being on a mission of really creating something and building something. And it's just like something that um, really makes me want to wake up and not even sleep and have a, even have energy at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 4 a.m., whenever, and just really be working on certain stuff. And the reason why I'm like just super thrilled just to be working on that stuff because I really feel that it has huge meaning for me and even in terms of contribution to other people. Like there are so many different kind of people who are writing me all the time. There's one guy who has gotten accepted to one very prestigious school and uh, like just no school, but like study program. And he's launching, launching his agency. He's like 16 years old. He's like, I'm just super surprised by him, the, the progress he's making. And he told me that, um, like he w wants me to mentor him, 
um, a few a few months ago, and even though I don't really kind of do these things anymore, and I usually charge my corporate clients on like like other people way more, uh, yeah, like companies etc. Is that I just I just like told him like okay, let's go because I really see the potential in him and I really see him kind of like want to help him because I kind of see myself inside him and based on all the things I've done or I would have done better when I was 16, I just told myself like, okay, uh, I'm definitely at least going to do my best with the time that I have just to help him. Um, so yeah, that was kind of, that was kind of, that kind of interesting just, but just to get back to the personalities, there's, um, if you're like, if you want to kind of have, maybe this is also a thing about psychology when I was 15 or 16 or so, I'm not sure. It's just like I was in a very weird position and I went to a psychologist because I was actually just really trying to figure out what I, what my preconditions based on my like personality and everything else would like, uh, what was I aligned most with in the future in terms of what my career should have looked like. And the only thing that I were it essentially went was like marketing and, and sales and, and like building businesses and stuff like that. So I, and I already knew that back then. But what was really interesting, the psychologist, which was, I mean, I didn't really trust her that much because she was using some old, very old methods, I, I believe. And she told me that like I had a very low confidence, which I, I like, frankly, I really thought that that time it, it could have, could it might have been true. And when I asked her, like, okay, if there's a way how I can improve my confidence just to become a different person, because back then, like, okay, I wasn't the big, bad, most confident person in the world, and I just, like, was, was going through a lot of internal things and, like, trying to figure stuff out and, like, going through certain failures that things didn't really work out as I wanted them to work out. And she told me, like, it's a very hard process, and you'll be, and there's not much that you can essentially do. And right after hearing that, I was just like very disappointed. And when I went back home, I I made the kind of decision that I would just not listen to her and just listen to myself. And then I just just really essentially find out that like even even now I see it very clearly that your confidence and your like the person who you are is just based on your actions, and not the actions that you're taking once that you actually go into gym once but that, that you actually go into fitness once and then the second day as well and the third day and that you go to the gym five times a week for the first month um and then you do this second month third month and you just don't stop that's it it's like boring is it like just you you don't create anything else you just like do the simple things every single day you just go and hit hit your workout every single day you just go and hit 16 hours of work every single day if that's what you want to be working on or that's something that's important to you just kind of like creating the identity you can become a different person instantly it's just about keeping the identity which is many times very hard like it, it, it's super hard if you're a type personality or if you at least see yourself as the a type personality as the overachiever as the person who goes the extra mile as the like person who strives for personal excellence and everything what he's doing and just setting so so high goals that it pushes him to just absolutely reinvent himself because there's not a, like like any part of of his current self won't really take him to the next level where he wants to go and that's something that is very hard to do if you're surrounded by type b personalities like just people who are enjoying life people who are partying people who are like okay i'm gonna see what's ha gonna happen with my life like just that can't happen i mean it, it's very hard that you make a significant progress in your life if you're around people who are questioning why you're doing the things that you're doing. And that's even the reason why I'm like right now, like just super freaking careful about who I put into my surroundings. It's like, just, I'm, I'm just like super very careful because even in the past, like just there are these different kind of people who like want to give you advice, but it's like, okay, I, I'll give you advice but the person doesn't really know what I'm what I want that even in, in terms of like if the person would would know what I want he wouldn't believe that I can achieve that because he has a different kind of belief set based on, on the beliefs of what he thinks he could achieve but that kind of like doesn't really make sense so the best way you can do is I mean like entrepreneurship it, it feels lonely 
sometimes it's like feels lonely you just like do the boring work you, you you're kind of like even if you have team of people and they're just like kind of dependent on you to set the vision and you need to be the person able to tell if if everything is going right or if something is not going right if you need to fire a person because he's not doing a good job or like just there are these different kind of things and the responsibilities from you which is okay i mean like um it, it kind of makes sense but yeah it's just like maybe maybe a different kind of statement here so in terms of, of even changing your personality it takes time for sure it takes time it takes time and effort but what i would say is like consistent effort it just takes consistent effort in terms of like every single day put this put this like this approximate number of hours in into the actual work and if you do that consecutively every single day for a long enough period of time you'll eventually make the progress but you need to put in the the number of hours every single day and that's essentially what i uh, what I really hate about like many people are saying that you should just go and and like give it six months your absolute max or just do something for six months but like people even this was a problem for me for a very long time that I just didn't understand the concept of what work actually was like how much did it really take and I believe like that's even one of the biggest reasons why really people fail in many aspects that they just don't really re- understand how much work it will require and in terms of launching a business like they really feel that uh maybe even that was the feeling that i had like okay people are having a job and like okay i'm having a business and i need to work less because i'm have i have a business for sure there's you, there's strategies how you can do that but if you're like you really want to scale it up and if you're for example just starting out like then you need to not work half less than than the people who have job who have job who have job who have a job but you need to perhaps work double on the amount just to compensate for the amount of skill and your learning curve that you'll need to absolve and go through in such a short period of time it's, it's just normal and it all comes down to your ability to put in the work it's just um even in terms of workout if you look at like all of these bodybuilders I've, I've been a bodybuilder it's just like structuring everything so that you're able to put as m- much volume of training in and recover it's like just put as much volume in and then recover and then eat and that's it and just try to mitigate being stressed out and all of these things if you really want to grow that I, I, I mean even today i was just kind of re uh, rethinking fitness and everything else and I, I told myself like i'm just so freaking happy that i'm not in that whole ecosystem anymore it's just also being surrounded by different kind of people and usually those people are not really it's like very self-centered sport that you really focus on yourself and even if you achieve something you pretty much don't achieve anything (laughs) it's like okay you look some way you you're on stage you uh, receive a trophy and that's it like you were starving yourself for three months supplementing in terms of like the real bodybuilders, they're taking stuff like steroids for three months or maybe for a year, destroying their health, feeling awful all the time and all the different kind of side effects it has. And okay, like you, you're doing this just to look good for for one or two days. Uh, I mean, like, okay, great. I did it one, like one season, never anymore. It's just like total waste of time. And even like in terms of looking good, I mean, that that's something that I really enjoy. It's just like that, that part of fitness is great and I like working out. I always when I work out, I either will listen to lecture cars, different kind of workbooks, video uh, audiobooks, which means that I'm like still learning or doing some some kind of work or just like yeah, writing stuff, emails, and uh, just really kind of kind of pushing the envelope there as well. Yeah, uh, so I guess like this pretty much explains the type A and type B personality. Hope I explain it pretty in depth. I guess it's like there are definitely books about psychology for example there's there's one book called emotional intelligence by daniel guleman Uh, i read it when i was 17 yeah i guess 17 and that was kind of like just speaking about emotional intelligence and why eq or emotional intelligence intelligence is sometimes more important than intelligence like iq uh, when achieving results that was like a few case studies were discussed in the book as well as um Maybe like these kind of different types of personalities, it might be something really interesting just to explore. Yeah, that could be that could be great. And just to maybe elaborate further on these these kind of things that we we've, we've been speaking about, and even like the things that I really had on my mind that I wanted to speak about today, and that's essentially just the um 
maybe like I have a point written down here that we celebrate when we did not win. And that's a question like, are we celebrating when we didn't even win? And maybe someone, I, I'm like just speaking about this in terms of our society that like we were celebrating and now like a lot of people are celebrating. They're like very happy. They're becoming very fragile from my point of view. And just like, are we celebrating too early? That's a great question that I'd, I think a lot of people might be willing to ask. And it's just like, there are so many problems in the on the on earth that still need to be solved. And even in terms of like, okay, you're, that was a thought that I that I really had like just a few hours ago when I was doing doing some kind of research for the article and, and like the research paper I'm writing is that like, okay we are currently there are, there are certain problems in the world for example education and then you have like all of these developing countries as Africa and you have like over a billion people who are still on, on the poverty line and they don't have water and whatever else it's just like super super bad and you have people in pakistan india like m hundreds of millions of people you can even imagine that like here in europe you have like germany is the biggest country with 80 million people and then you have these small countries such as luxembourg or even like eastern europe maybe central europe is a bit different because you have a bit bit less people here and i'm like i've i was brought up in a small country in terms of like okay slovakia five million people Czech, czechia which is like six million people if i'm not, I'm not mistaken then you have austria which is also like five million people or, or so or six or seven i'm not sure and like just these small countries and you see the environment like it's all working very great but in terms of like if you just compare that to like let's say india like india one country is way bigger than europe itself in terms of the population and then you have china like another billion people and then you have philippines 100 million people then you have vietnam 100 almost 100 million people living there and then you have pakistan 200 million people living there then you have nigeria like 200 million people living there as well and what what else like there's japan i mean japan is a developed country what other countries are there um indonesia 100 million people living there then you have mexico 100 million people living there brazil over, over 250 million people living there and in terms of like all of these economies that i named out like all of them could be considered developing in, in, in certain respects and the main point is here that that was essentially the thing I'm really, I mean, this is maybe just an idea that I've been really speaking or thinking about. I'm not sure. Maybe they're like definitely people, they're may, way, way more advanced people than I am. It's essentially just like, what's the biggest, what's the, like the vision for us or what are we really trying to solve for here in terms of like our earth? Like we try to really make a progress and like the progress we've made in the last 120 years it's just phenomenal. Like, look at the world in nineteen uh, in nineteen hundreds. Like, no cars, horses. I mean, electricity was was barely getting implemented. Um, the, the whole energy industry was based on coal, and like, just everything was so old. And look at us one hundred twenty years later. Like, life quality, everything. It's just uncomparable. Like, the life quality, everything we have here right now today is just like peaked up even in terms of, like the people who are living in developed countries they're way better off than we've been like 120 years ago but now essentially like with that being said we have different kind of problems and i was just really thinking about like okay what what kind of problems are we really trying to solve for here one great very great person who i really admire very much is elon musk and maybe just like really applying his perspective that like there are certain kind of key problems that we we as a society need to solve in order to get to the next level. The first one is sustainable energy, which I very much agree with. And then, I mean, he has the vision of taking the the population or essentially just just making the human human species multiplanetary species uh, species just to prevent some kind of catastrophe from happening, which is like inevitable. Like there, like it's just a matter of time until. All, meteoroid strikes the earth once again or is just some cataclysmic event happens because the whole universe is in transition it's just like the, the the amount of time that that space takes or the amount of time that the formation of earth took is just like so so big but then there's also like an experiment experimentation ex um date of expiry like due date uh, until like the earth will essentially cease to exist which is yeah it, it's normal it's, 
if you look at like the next billions and hundreds of billions of years there like earth will probably even the sun will explode or something else will happen some other cataclysmic event and like people essentially need to be prepared for this moment just to move the species somewhere else and now the, the, the real question here is just okay what are we really trying to solve for here and just for us okay if we are really to become like this next level of civilization that will be on a whole new level in terms of okay having for example like maybe i'm just gonna name a few things or how i think the vision i already described the vision in a different video but like maybe just how i think that the the vision could really look like this for example um there will be only sustainable energy that like we will be producing that net zero of um in terms of net zero carbon dioxide so that that means that the atmosphere and everything else on the earth uh, all the ecosystems here will be functioning well and that will somehow take an under control and also waste management so that we'll be uh, we'll be uh managing the materials that we have uh, here on here in on earth very well and if we won't have the materials then there's like these different kind of plans that nasa and other kind of these organizations are really planning to, to mine these asteroids just just take mining equipment there and just like bring these the very expensive materials back on earth because for example they're like the asteroids at least from what i've heard what i've read what i've researched is that you have these kind of asteroids and um all of them include different kind of materials and some of them include like for example gold is very expensive and rare here on earth but then if you just find um a, a an asteroid that's that's made of diamonds and gold and stuff like that, and you just bring it here, and then there are these kind of like problems that okay, if you just bring bring that asteroid here like closer to Earth and then start start mining it, I'm like I'm not sure what the technology will be in in thirty forty years or maybe one hundred two hundred years, it's it just like okay, uh, that would devaluate de and even make it harder to assess the real value of materials. Yeah, definitely. And and just like all of these these different kind of problems in terms of society and like just definitely many things will have to change. And I'm really just trying to assess, okay, like if that's the vision, if, if the vision is to sustain the human species throughout the next millions of years and, and just like because we as humans be human beings, we are just not that not that special, I would say. We're just like one type of, type of species that was uh, kind of... If you look look at the, the, the there's this book Homo Deus th that kind of really describes where we even come from and like just we are not that special at all. We just have the different kind of cognitive abilities which enable us to form groups and work in teams on different kind of things that really matter to us the most. So <clears throat> and then, then just make progress. But now I, I really feel that we're in a kind of good transition. But what I was really thinking about today is that, okay, in terms of economic growth, economic growth or growth in terms of like you, you're providing education to people, they're growing, they're, the life quality is getting better, people are like health, life expectancy is getting better. And you have just all of these billions of people in, in countries such as China. And I mean, China is getting developed very fast, but like India... Uh, Pakistan, Nigeria, like all of these really rising economies with tons of people. And the biggest problem here is that um, those countries, the one of the only ways or the, the side effect of actually increasing their, their economy, that like bringing more wealth to the countries, like enabling them to produce more, to become more clever, etc., etc., is that you raise the level of pollution. And the sustainable damage becomes becomes worse because you essentially, for example, start producing more more materials. You start produce, producing more food, um, more not more food, but like more transportation, everything else, and that just counts up to the um, like the sustainable damage. In terms of my friend that's that's in China right now, he told me that he was calling me and he told me like he can't even go outside because of uh, he he's like a name Wuhan or Ganzhou. I'm not really even sure how to pronounce the name, the Chinese names, but like one of those big, big cities here in China with millions and millions of people living there. And he just told me like the air, is, air quality is so bad there. And I was like, okay, is that even a real thing? Because I'm currently here stuck in the Central Europe in a country that has, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm still in almost one and a half million like people living in the city where I'm at right now, but it's still like the country is pretty much very small. And everything is very pure here. 
which which kind of makes the difference. So in terms of like just really looking at it from the global perspective, it's just really trying to find the leverage points that will enable us to make this transition successfully. And like just even in terms of like the rising global levels of pollution, like they're still rising. Like the pollution we are producing here in Europe, it, it's it's high. I mean, some countries are getting better, but at the same time, like if you look at China, like the, the progress China made is spectacular in terms of what they achieved, what life quality they achieved, spectacular. On the other hand, on the other hand, I mean the sustainable damage that they've caused is just catastrophic. And the main point here is that like China doesn't look that it's slowing down in terms of how much pollution is producing. And if you just start adding these different rising economies there as well, so, such as Nigeria and Brazil and like just all of these multi-million, if not billion, um, billion like people countries, even if you look at India, it's going to just be catastrophic. And it, it's just like, okay, if, if this is happening now, like, it's very similar in terms of making progress. It's just about like the volume of, of total volume that you produce every single year. And if the if you produce a lot of volume every single year and then you just duplicate it for the next 10 years, like it's, it's going to stack up. It's just like, it's like, it's the same as if a person is gaining half a pound or maybe 100 grams, which is, I'm not sure how many pounds, is like 100 grams of fat every single week. And if he's doing that for long enough, for a few years, he'll eventually end up obese. And that's the same thing what we're doing here right now. It's just like, okay, we have these resources, we have these kind of um, like natural resources and even our planet as, as a whole. And I'm, I mean, like, I'm not this kind of weird guy and, and, and the sustainability guy. I'm just like really essentially being very critical here and employing my critical thinking and just really trying to be very objective, assessing the situation we are in right now. It's just like, we are in kind of danger here. Like we need to really kick up things to a whole new level. And like, they're definitely like we're going too fast in terms of if you look at the progress, we're going too fast. And many things, or many of the things in which we're trying to make progress are very costly, not in terms of money, but mainly in terms of energy. If you look at like uh, the current economic system or even the economic system of Europe and everything else, like we are running on energy. If we don't have energy, if the lights would be turned off, we couldn't run, we couldn't start our PCs, the whole economy wouldn't work. And like every single year, like we definitely sustainable energy is, is being pushed forward. But at the same time, like just these rising economies, they don't have access to sustainable energy in most cases. Then that's, that's kind of big problem here. So just just a critical assessment of the situation in which we are right now like definitely these problems are very important and at the same time like there are these different kind of gadgets and everything else that's going to help us with with different kind of solutions to many many different problems for example artificial intelligence could be very um very important and the equation that we're really trying to solve now in the next few years and next decades. And it's essentially that, like, for example, if you look at artificial intelligence and its inventive powers, if GPT-5 will be here this month, uh, it's like I've heard from some sources that GPT-5 should, GPT should be released sometime this month. And if we just continue with this, GPT-6, GPT-7, GPT-10, whatever, GPT-20, then the computational power will rise in terms of how much the AI is able to compute, then it could really solve us, help us solve a lot of problems in terms of like really applicable solar, solar power and just all of these, these different things. And then you, if you look at it, this could be, this could be like really powerful, just really solving, solving this kind of problem. And maybe in, even in terms of um, there's, Currently, we're we're working like these nuclear power plants. They're like they're one another concept is using nuclear fusion. Uh, that's like a concept that's that's currently even being tested out. And if they just really find out how to create a lot of energy from nuclear fusion, which is um, like doesn't really produce any 
waste, that would be really great. And if just this would be split to other parts of the world, just unlimited source of clean energy, then like this would be a, a huge thing for the world. I think like you could be able to power all the electric cars and just like this part would be kind of soft. But then you still have like, okay, you will be fine to fighting for the resources. Um, and like then different kind of like expeditions, maybe to moon mining resources from moon or um, maybe like this sounds like sci-fi. I'm just like really trying to be as, as open as I can. And even though I'm like recording this um, at, at late, at early morning hours, but at the same time, it just like really kind of gives me the extra extra power to, to think really big or I say, I, I mean like these are the things that Elon Musk and like all the other people I've read kind of a lot of books from people who have space exploration companies even Naveen mm, there's what was this? Naveen Jain Naveen Jain that was the that's an Indian millionaire billionaire I mean he is a tech billionaire and he's currently reinvesting majority of his wealth into his space exploration companies where he's uh, planning to do like expeditions to moon and stuff uh, not for like mainly for research and stuff yeah so that kind of drives the main point here is that like do we really celebrate when we didn't even win and when there's just so much work to be done i really feel that protesting and like just all of these people who are gluing their hands to concrete with some kind of acid i mean like that's stupid first off you won't have help anyone if you amputate your hand like that's first thing i really think that's weird and on the other hand it's just like mainly like every single country has different kind of spirits in terms of how how big of a team spirit they are and how much do they believe in themselves and how much are they really focused on themselves versus being focused on the community as a whole And usually the people who are focused on community don't really think about themselves, which is kind of weird. But on the other hand, it's just like personal comps, like mainly people think, or maybe that's, that was even, that that's like a preconception that people think that consumption of goods will help them be happy in terms. Like, for example, for me, consumption like stresses me out um in terms of buying new stuff that i don't need i just like get turned off if i buy something that i don't need not because i like it would cost me any money that i i just like usually hate to have stuff uh, that i don't need that i don't use uh, i even sold my car yesterday um i just don't need it yesterday two days ago um yeah, so just, so just like, and now when I sold it, I mean, I just feel super free because I didn't even use it. It's just like, okay, getting rid of stuff. Sometimes the more, less stuff you have, the more actionable you are because you have like more more cash on hand. And like, um, even with that, you're just like, okay, let's go and create something. And in terms of like, just even these personalities, like maybe the last 20 minutes, uh, I've been just speaking about, thinking of this, like, this is something that, that excites me way more than just like being that kind of guy that just enjoys his love life I, I i try that i i can't do that i just feel horrible about myself about and about the potential to create something great when i was in hawaii you could see that like i just uh, was there but at the same time like just i was every single day i was super fucking turned off because <laughs> this, I, I wanted to do something i wanted to produce something i want i, I was motivated by achievement but i didn't receive any simulations i was search, searching for challenges i was like learning how to fly a drone uh, editing videos whatever but at the same time, it was like super freaking turned off. So it's very important to align yourself. And it's nothing. There's nothing wrong if you if you need to work every single day, and if you if you have that kind of feeling that you're just super obsessed about creating effect, impact and just like working on some stuff, being on a mission. We need more people like that if you're here to turn this around. So yeah, like there's there's this crisis in terms of you have all all these people in developing countries, but if you help them develop themselves, then they'll co cause even more pollution, which might take us on a very bad path in terms of how fast will we be able to develop new te technologies to mitigate pollution. At the same time as we're like, just what will be the trends? Like, how fast will we be able to catch up? 
before it's too late. Because if you look at this this trend that we have, like it's getting it's getting worse. I've been in Bali and Bali is just super polluted. You have this rivers full of trash there. And there's trash, trash like all over the place. In many, many places. I've been in Tanzania and like like there there's trash everywhere as well. And like the water is super polluted, everything is like many, many, many places places super polluted. Then you go to um like Hawaii, Hawaii is pretty pristine. The water is very cool there. But at the same time, like just all of these things are slowly con- starting to count up. If you look at plastics and plastic, w- when they were invented sometime in 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, I'm not maybe 1980s, 90s, they became really predominant. But now it's just like the production has skyrocketed and uh, you can see plastics everywhere. And there's this very big pol- problem of this in, in the long run, because like 30 years in terms of humanity is nothing even in the history of the world it's just like nothing even 100 years in the history of the world is absolutely nothing um we as humans like the humans as we are right now we are here for example approximately 100,000 years which means that like if if there would be a person a baby 60,000 years ago and you would bring it up in the current world and and just like in the current ecosystem, like that person would be normal person and would fit the humanity like the same as any any single other person. It, it's, but like just, just one hundred years, and we've gone from having horses and like just being super primitive from my point of view, to being just like having artificial intelligence, being like on the verge of techno technical revolution of something that's haven't been here before any time, be, like just that didn't even happen any time before and we're just so close but there's still just some certain things that we need to really think about so clean energy and and in terms of like africa and these countries like i i really think that it's great to help them but at the same time we just really need to think about these things so um yeah everything changes so fast sustainable energy materials multiplicity species or habitat i mean like that's kind of like the bigger vision I, I guess even elon musk is aiming for that and what i even feel, feel that like what my mission is i didn't really even share it that much is just like really helping people unlock the potential that's in them but at the same time like just mainly aligning them towards working on something that's important and significant in terms of achieving these bigger bigger goals because in terms of like achieving personal goals, I really feel that like there's just so so much happiness you can get out of stuff. Like you, like I can really maybe be, be very open with you here as well. I just like okay, I just wanted to when I was starting out, and I like went through a few failures with my entrepreneurship and like just pretty big fuck ups from from a certain standpoint, and then I just like don't if. And then I once I like started achieving certain things and things started going right. And I just like wanted to really prove to other people that I was good enough. And that's the reason why I, like, I just started, for example, renting a Lambo or like doing some kind of photo shoots with expensive cars and like just driving them and just posting on social media. And then um, like just meeting celebrities and like just all other stuff. I'm posting it on social media as well. And like, just I always, always when I did that, or maybe like just really thinking back about that, it's just like, did it bring me any happiness that I did that? Absolutely no. Um, would I think it's like, even like if, did I feel really happy back then? Did I th- think that I was making a difference? No. I wasn't making a difference. It's like just personal consumption in terms of like, okay, you buy a Lambo, you buy that. Like, okay, it's great. But that, that I mean, like, what's next? It's like, okay, you will be working for seven years or maybe five years and you're going to earn all the cash you want to earn. You're going to get to eight figures a year, which is like 10 million a year and net income or whatever else. And you're going to buy a big mansion for seven million or maybe even 20 million with a mortgage 
you're going to buy a brand new Lambo, a Huracan, or, um, and you're going to buy like Porsche, G63 AMG, um, and you're going to start flying private. And you'll do that. And then you'll ask yourself the question, like, what's, what's next? Like, is this it? Like, I was sitting in a, like, $25 million villa in LA. Beverly Hills, one of the nicest and most pristine places that you can even imagine. Sitting on a pool and just watching on a vision that I had on my vision board since I was 16 or 15 or maybe even 14. And just like the first thought that came to my mind was like, what the hell is this? Like, this isn't as I imagine it. This isn't like, this is kind of weird. This is like, feels very weird. And like, after trying to really decompose that situation, just take the main learning points out of there, I just like came to the conclusion that like being on a mission is something that makes me feel more happy than if anything else. It's just like doing the actual work, ma- making a difference, making a significant difference. I, I won't make a difference if I'll drive a Lambo and try to show off that, okay, I'm actually like this big G, whatever else. Um, like just trying to be cool and like selling some kind of weird stuff that doesn't help help anyone as many people are doing and uh, maybe even guiding people in the bad direction. It's just... That that's not what I want to dedicate my life personally to, and I just don't really feel that that's something that where people can make a very big difference. Yeah. So, in terms of this, like really solving the energy crisis, or like really giving the humanity even more energy than we currently have to be able to operate fully digital and to even to increase the computing power even more. Imagine if we had like supercomputers, everyone had a super supercomputer, everything would be even more connected, which where we are where we're getting very fast. And then the ability of you like humans to make progress, even connecting humans to be with perhaps AI and just like all of this innovation that will happen. Um I, I feel like the next one hundred years very will be very positive in this respect. And like my vision is just just to be part of that. Like I know, regardless of what I achieve, that I won't feel any way different from the way how I feel today. Which kind of that that's even like a feeling I've I've many times discussed it with other people. It's just like okay, you really think that you'll feel different when you achieve something, and then you achieve it and you feel the same. And then you think that the different, more important thing will make you feel different when you achieve it. But then you achieve it and you still feel the same. And then you eventually find that, came, come down to the conclusion that regardless of what you achieve, in this very specific moment, regardless of where you are right now, like just maybe look around where you are and, and just like think about that, this thing, like essentially right now in this very specific moment, you can feel the same way as you'll feel when you achieve the biggest goal of yours. Goal of yours, like regardless of what it is. I would say like experiences are something that's way more important or it gives you more joy than than all the material stuff can buy you relationships and stuff like just for example for me just okay going and traveling whatever just buying some kind of weird ticket somewhere to the other side of the world that might not be even developed and you just go there and network with people and just try to learn stuff because for me personally one of the biggest joys of my life and even one of the, one of the things that gives me the most joy and the most pleasure and fulfillment is just learning new stuff growth equals progress if you learn if you read the book non-fiction but learn something new you just feel so excited you just feel so, so spectacular and that's that's a sad, sad effect of this think about the time that you felt the best in your life there's a very great chance that you actually made a lot of progress back then it's because like these two things are pretty much very 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 interlinked so the main point here where i see the biggest problem maybe like problem just realigning people is specifically like giving people vision and just guiding them in the right direction. 
and just having them succeed. It's it's not now that you'll be the person who will try to be echo and for that reason you won't go to work and you won't use the transport and you won't use this, this, this and you'll just be broke for the rest of your life and li- live a miserable life because you have like tons of people like that. But on the other hand, I just really feel that you can be an entrepreneur from a di- different respect. You, you maybe don't even need to employ other people. You just need to find a really creative way of how you can deliver value to other people or essentially just maybe even align your vision or your personality to the greater vision of what we're actually trying to create here. And then just made a positive contribution. If you look at like all the big companies, for example, WhatsApp became a billion dollar company with 20 employees and then was acquired when it was 20 employee company by Facebook for 19 billion. I mean, like you can do that. You don't need the people right now. Like the only thing you need is just being creative and being seeking opportunities and just putting the work in like it's it's all about like look at this even my perspective maybe this is a different thing that i'll speak about today it's like after trying everything out there all the habits and ninja stuff meditating praying whatever you can name a, you can name a thing and i'll i'll bet you that i did that just really trying to understand what separates the successful people from the not successful people and from this what separates the super successful people and the only thing that's it. It's just time and effort. Nothing else. And definitely like there are these little components like luck and stuff like that. But like the more you do, the more luck you get. And the thing is here that they're based on the analysis of Malcolm Gladwell and like just all these other people. Malcolm Gladwell, he's one of the prominent leaders in terms of researching these successful people. And he has made a conclusion that all these successful people in sports and, and for example, business, Microsoft, Bill Gates, it's just like they had their 10,000 hours in before they actually achieved and stumbled upon the best opportunity. Because like 10,000 hours equals to approximately 10 years of progress. And if you do 10,000 hours, you are amongst the top 0.01% of all the people out there in your industry if you're really focused. And if you do that, then you can take advantage of way more complex opportunities that can stretch you way more, but at the same time, like you're, you're way better in, in accomplishing a lot of things. For example, even the, the founder of WhatsApp, he was 33 or 34 when he stumbled up upon the opportunity of uh, actually finding WhatsApp. He was just, he just saw that there was, he was working at Yahoo for in that time for about seven or eight years. And he just saw that Apple has released their app store and he went there and he just saw that, okay, it would be a great idea to create an SMS, like like texting system that would be free. So he did that and within the first months, like just the, the number of the users started skyrocketing because they actually created something that was um, like iPhones had a lot of, lot of traffic. They were growing as well, which was kind of coincidence with what happened there with WhatsApp and they like they just capitalized on the growth. If, if someone else would have created something very similar back then, like they would have grown as well. It's just like being in the right place at the right time. It's it's kind of luck. Yeah, definitely luck. But what they what they don't say is just okay. He freaking had like just so much hours already inside of operating a very similar company. At a, I mean, like working in a very similar company, doing all those things, and now they he started just doing them on very different side. It's like opportunity recognition increases with the amount of volume and amount of information and contacts you have, and the opportunity recognition increases the more you are surrounded by the right people and just explore more, just read more. It's like, it's the same thing as if you, for example, if you look at Arabic text, and they're writing from the left, right to left. And if you just look at the text, you just can't understand anything. But on the other hand, if you look at, if you take an Egyptian or Saudi Arabian and he, ask him what's written there, like he'll tell you. Because he knows that he already understands that, and that's all. That's a similar thing. You just start seeing things where other people don't see the things, and the only thing you actually need to do, do is to, is to get to those ten thousand hours in the field, and that's it. That's it. Like you just do those ten thousand hours at least, and then you'll be there. 
So I, I just made a decision, or maybe yeah, a few few weeks ago, I was just really re- really rethinking my strategy about all of the things that I'm doing, and I just like made a decision that if I'll just put ten thousand hours of practice in within the next two years, that, that this is the most significant thing that I can I can essentially do for my future for all the other things that I'm doing. Not a single other thing. It's just about brute volume, um, and just be being really re- relentless in terms of the amount of work you put in it's the same as with Kobe Bryant unfortunately very tragic ending but at the same time he was one of the best basketball players at the same time and if you um, speak or if you listen to what some of his trainers for example Tim Gruber the author of Relentless as well as winning the Relentless, Relentless Pursuit of Success, one of my like favorite books. Those books have changed my life and I definitely suggest that any, anyone else reads them as well. And what he said about Kobe when he was training him is that like, he was super relentless. When other people were playing, he was he was just practicing. And he just sometimes practiced at 4 a.m. and just like practice. And he did this for 20 years. And that's how he became a legend. It's the same with anything else. You just like put the freaking work in and you keep putting the work in and that's it if you look at mr beast how he's doing that right now he, he has sacrificed absolutely everything almost everything in his life just to be able to do as much work as possible there was this video of him where he showed that he lives in a warehouse where he has a bed and bent press because he likes to lift weights or at least he's getting into that and he just like wakes up and goes to work so in terms of ten thousand hours if you want to break down if you I, I know like if you work 16 hours a day for 365 days a year straight, that equals to something like 6,000 hours, which means essentially like if you do 1,000 hours less and have a bit, bit, of, bit of free time, you can within 24 months, you can hit 10,000 hours. Now, the rule is here is that essentially you just need to become... You, you need to know where you're going and based on that, you can make the decisions, even the adjustments based on like what, what things you're really spending your time on. And in, in terms of maybe just comparing this, this to what normal people do, if you look at normal people, on average, people in the US work something around 1,700 hours per year. Um, if you look at maybe Austria uh, and Slovakia, people here work around maybe 13, 14, 1,500 max hours a year. If you do 6,000, you do four times the amount of volume hours that they do. So in one year, you can do four times the amount of progress that they do. And this is essentially where this gets very serious, that you can get within two years, you can get maybe eight, nine, ten years of progress. And that's very important because you're going to, even in terms of you see how the things are shifting very fast, you're going to become one of the best people out there. And now it's just deconstructing of about how you actually will be able to put these 10,000 hours in. And it's very simple. It's just you eliminate all the stuff that's non-essential. For example, for me, it's just I have these relationships that I nurture, like just very selected few people that I value very much and I consider my friends. And they're not all of them. They are not all of them. At the same time, I like family, I'm maintaining relationships, but being very open that I, I'm on a mission and I'm like working on something that there's this kind of respect for even me me towards them, but as well as like they respect myself that I made a decision to actually just be super ridiculous in the pursuits that I have. That's the second thing. Then the third thing is... Mm, uh, fitness again okay. fitness is a non-negotiable for me it just like gives me so much freaking energy every single day there's no single other thing that makes me feel better than fitness it's just like okay i, I want to be happy like this is my form of happiness i really feel that many people today are just super fragile in terms of like they trying to trying to impress other people based on the clothes that they're wake uh wearing you you can see that like these kind of weird guys who are, who are obese and overweight are trying to impress other people by the the stuff that they have but they're not taking care of themselves which is like i mean like it doesn't make sense you're spending so much money trying to impress other people but not doing anything for your health and not maybe even for your health i mean i'm a, i'm an aesthetic person I, I strive for excellence every single day that i succeed in my workout i just feel successful 
and I know that this is the successful version of myself that I wanted to be when I was 13 years old and I was starting out and I was like overweight and I just knew that I didn't want to be that version of myself anymore. So I just made the decision to change. And here nine years I am right now. I'm in like the shape that I've always wanted to be in. And at the same time, I'm just like focusing on all of these different kind of business KPIs and I'm really trying to move forward. So um, in terms of these 10,000 hours, I even kind of had a, had an idea because when you like make the decision to really put, put a lot of effort in, then it's very important to just focus the effort in one direction. Even If you look at, for example, um, Bill Gates, he focused all of his effort on coding. I'm not sure if he learned to code COBOL back there or C, or, or just essentially like he was one of the best programmers back then because he just spent so much time programming. And that's even the reason why he was able to just drop out of power because when he started Microsoft, he already had these 10,000 hours. He was already one of the best experts at his age at that time, which enabled him to, to just start adventure. So in terms of that, like 10,000 hours is the precondition. I mean, it's not a precondition. You can even achieve success with like just starting like on, on the base. Um, it's just maybe a, a precondition for me that I really feel that I want to do it because even based on the amount of volume of, of information and everything else that I can learn, it's, it's more of a like the kind of personality and person who I really strive to become, that I know that I'll become when I do this. And my idea, my idea was kind of like just sharing this on social media as well. I'm going to see if I'm going to be doing that uh, since, okay, I'm not here just to spend 10,000 hours just, just shooting myself how I'm doing that stuff, but I actually want to be doing that. Uh, but yeah, what I wanted to say is just align the, these 10,000 hours in a specific way. You know, like, for example, for me right now, it's just like marketing, uh, sales, and pretty much like the whole business infrastructure as well as like just social media. So, I mean, there are different kind of aspects I'm planning to master. It's going in one direction pretty much. And then there are these kind of different uh, spin-offs that you can do. But like what I really feel is that most people just underestimate the amount of volume, energy, and like all other resources it'll take to make the kind of progress that you really want to strive to make. So, yeah, um, I really feel that in today's, like it's, it's even kind of like just becoming very clear about the your mission, what's your mission, who are the people who you want to be help, with, help the most, and even like what's kind of like your what will be your role in helping humanity come to the next stage of development? Like some people, for example, Bill Gates or Microsoft in general, all the people who work for Microsoft in the last 40 years, their vision that they achieved very significantly, or maybe for example, even Apple, is just bringing computing power to, to the white public, which they did, and they've transformed the world. Then there's some, some Altman, and he has brought the ChatGPT Ch and like just also with his team and OpenAI, they have brought open, open, like open use artificial intelligence to the white public, which has transformed the world in one year. Um, yeah, it's already more than one year that ChatGPT has been released, and like I mean, the the results and everything else—it's just so spectacular. So, and now it's just about like really becoming clear about what's your specific vision, mission, and just becoming really committed to that vision. Uh, for example, as I already said, like for for me, I really see that the potential in people in maybe for now, Eastern European countries and like all these other countries is, is just like I really feel that there there's just so much put more potential in those people and just like really trying to bring them up. And not in, not in terms of like personal gains because then you have maybe I don't really want to speak anything bad about like for example Andrew Tate. But at the same time, like, okay, his movement kind of had very positive impact on many young people. But at the same time, it's just like the way how he presents himself is, is mainly self-focused. That, okay, you earn a lot of money and then you just like, okay, buy all these luxury stuff and like flex. Okay, I'm the biggest guy. But I mean, what was this going to bring to the society or essentially like to the vision of, of creating a really prospering, prospering humanity, I would say. I mean, I'm not sure if that matches. I really feel that unlocking the potential in people and just really enabling them to um, like satisfy all, all of the material needs while striving to achieve a bigger vision than themselves, or at least put a, 
hand forward, I really feel that that's one of the biggest visions. And even influencing the younger generation in this way, that I feel that that would be a great, great idea where we could come from. And in terms of like Eastern Europe, like there are these different countries such as Romania um, or Bulgaria, Macedonia, Serbia, even Slovakia. Like these countries are, are, are a bit, like they're different. And in terms of like, if you would just like help these people unlock their potential in a certain way, uh, that could have a tremendous impact in the next 40 years. Because if in 30, 40 years, you have a lot more, done more, more educated people who are more socially aware and are at the same time able to contribute to the better of the world. That's that's something that really excites me as well. And in terms of like, just really uh, maybe driving down last point then, it's just like, regardless of how, that that's that's a pretty i would say even very significant statement but at the same time it just unlocks your freedom enables you to do anything you want in your life and the statement or essentially the truth goes like this like regardless of how significant you try to be in life you'll never be significant and you'll never stay significant and most of your legacy that you'll try to left behind will vanish anyways and this was kind of inspired i'm gonna i have two thoughts that i want, would like to do to, to add to this point the first one is that this was really described by alex ramosi uh, you know that i refer to him pretty often and yeah he said like one of his, the examples he stated like you have for example the queen of england which unfortunately passed away more than a year ago right now maybe like 14 months ago and she was one of the, she reigned for a very long time. She was one of the most influential, influen, most influential and as well as like most wealthy persons in the world. And she passed away. And now a year later, maybe even like three weeks later, not, no one is speaking about her. People have other problems that they mind. But this is, what do you think will happen, for example, to me or to you or to whatever, whoever else? who doesn't have the pristine privilege of being the cool king ruler of, of like Great Britain. I mean, th that kind of drives the point in, like regardless of how significant you try to be, your legacy and if anything else, even if you leave a multi-billion company after you, you most likely won't be that significant. And this kind of like gives you a little bit of power to do whatever the heck you want in your life. And it doesn't really matter. Like. Maybe that's the, that's the first point here. You can do whatever the heck you want. Even I, I know that I, I have that, that kind of feeling. Like, if I want, I can just go whatever else. I can just travel the world, be in Hawaii one week, then I go to Bali, then go to Australia, then go to China, then just travel the world and go to Bali and maybe uh, rent a huge villa, live there, um, date seven different girls every single day, or like different week, different girl. I know people who are doing that there. Nice ones, like just European girls that come there. And you can do a bunch of other stuff, all right? Even I know that I can do a bunch of other stuff, but like it's all about just coming down to like, what do you really want to spend your life on? And that's one of the, what do you want to spend your life doing? That's kind of like the most important question you can ask yourself. Like, okay, what's the thing you want to be doing? So, yeah, that, that was the first point that I wanted to add. And the second point is that you have this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, wrote by Dale Carnegie. And it was one of the most influential books that I've ever read. And even it's like highly ranked. It's almost 100 years old. And in terms of if you want to enhance your relationships and even the way how you approach people and the the, the equity you can build in terms of building equity in the relationships this is the best book you should definitely go to go for and read and the main concept or one of the main concepts in, explained in this book was specifically just just driving down the importance or what or undercovering the, the the thing that actually people want and in all relationships in our social relations with other people if you look at that all people want to feel important that's anything like the person who is angry at you or, for example, if a teacher disagrees with you or um, if you turn someone off, he just wants to feel important. And if you 
if you understand this point that all of, all of the people want to feel important and if you you personally give them importance you make them feel valued and in respect they are gonna be prepared to give more value to you and more respect to you then you just won and maybe in terms of like understanding this concept from the viewpoint of yourself that you're also a person striving to just feel important when i was driving a lambo i wanted to feel important in the end i felt way different but that's a different that's a different topic when i'd like just try to take pictures with all of this these like successful entrepreneurs one of the best online, online marketers in the world and just like do all of these other stuff i just from one hand wanted to really feel important when i share you my social media great but i mean like is that the end I, it doesn't really make that kind of a difference and now the main point here is like okay what do you want to spend your life on and what what's, what kind of problems do you want to contribute to solving and that's i guess like the biggest biggest thing and you can now just choose whatever toolkit you want you can go ahead and use social media to just share your message and create the kind of an impact you want to create. Great, you can do that. You can go ahead and create a business and just create an online marketing business, earn all of the money with that, as well as create a positive impact. But I really think that everything just stems down to aligning the long-term vision of our humanity with your sh- with short-term goals and personal wealth and in sh- certain maybe maybe different kind of point of view, just like really fulfilling all of your basic needs and needs that you have as well as like all of the other needs that you have and in terms of like uh like at the same time while achieving your goals or going forward towards your goals so yeah that, a lot of thoughts today uh it was it was a very very fruitful discussion with you or at least like a fruitful uh podcast episode today I had a very had a few like a lot of ideas in my mind if you have any other question or remarks or anything else, just feel free to shoot me a message on my Instagram, Jacob Darshpartek. And with that being said, I'm going to catch you in the next one and have a great day. Bye.